In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Repentance. 1. Repentance is a sacrament. 2. Repentance and confession. 3. Repentance and the Church. 4. Repentance and salvation. 5. Repentance and the work of grace. 6. Repentance and experiences. 7. Repentance, joy and contrition. 8. Repentance and newness of life. 9. Repentance precedes all other sacraments. 10. Repentance, conduct and deeds. The concept of repentance. The importance of repentance is undisputed by all but repentance in the Orthodox Church is totally different from repentance in other churches with respect to its definition. Efficacy, practice and necessity for salvation. 1. Repentance is a sacrament. In the Orthodox concept, repentance is one of the Church's seven sacraments. It is called the sacrament of repentance. However, the Protestant groups, in not believing in the Church, sacraments, do not consider repentance a holy mystery. Therefore, there is a difference between repentance and the sacrament of repentance. This difference has its consequences. 2. Repentance and Confession In the Orthodox concept, confessing one's sins represents the main part of the sacrament of repentance. By confessing, we mean confessing to a priest. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Prov. 28. 13. People in the Old Testament practice confession. It is written, and it shall be, when he is guilty in any of these matters, that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for his sin which he has sinned. Lev. 5. 5. 6. The Holy Bible is full of examples of confessions. Confession. Continued until the last prophet of the Old Testament or the time between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The time of John the Baptist, when Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Matt. 3. 5. 6. In the New Testament also people practice confession. It is written, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds, Acts 19.18, and confess your trespasses to one another, Jaws 5.16. However, the Protestant groups do not believe in confession and do not consider it part of repentance. 3. Repentance and the Church. It is true that repentance is a work within the heart involving regret and a resolution to abandon the sin in addition to the actual abandoning of sin practically and from the heart. Yet repentance is completed inside the church by confession and the absolution. The sinner is to confess his sins and the priest is to read the absolution and give the forgiveness, following the Lord's words, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. John 20 22-23 this is also followed by the guidance that the penitent receives from his spiritual father in order to remain in his penitence. As for our Protestant brethren, they present repentance as being completely independent from the church. It is an individual act with no relation with priesthood because they do not believe in priesthood, but they believe in the direct relationship with God. Regarding this point, our Protestant brethren are divided into two groups. A. A group which openly rejects confession and priesthood. This is the weaker group because it is so open that those who are steadfast in their belief will be aware of it. Also, the notions of this group are clear and can be replied to. B. The second group does not speak against confession or priesthood or the Eucharist, but its followers try to make people forget these sacraments by not talking about them and by presenting alternatives. For example, they say, you are in need of repentance and a need to return to God. Go and cast yourself at God's feet, leave your sins to him to erase by his blood, and immediately you will come out justified as if you had not sinned before. He washes you and you will become whiter than snow. They do not speak about the importance of confession or the absolution or the Eucharist, they leave them out to make people forget about them. 
at the same time. They use spiritual words and thus deceive many naive people. This is an obscure way and it is our duty to reveal it to people. 4. Repentance and Salvation Many of our Protestant brethren try to separate repentance from the subject of salvation. When they concentrate on Christ's blood, they say to people, you are saved by the blood of Christ and not by repentance. Repentance is one of the deeds and you cannot be saved by deeds. We do not deny that salvation is completed by the blood of Christ. But there is no salvation without repentance. The Lord Jesus Christ says, Unless you repent you will all likewise perish. LK 13 3 Repentance is necessary for salvation because nobody is without sin. As long as there is sin, then there is punishment for sin, and the wages of sin is death. There is no salvation from that death except through repentance. Repentance makes us worthy of Christ's blood. Unless you repent you will all likewise perish. 5. Repentance and the work of grace. Many Protestant groups hold that repentance is one of the works of grace and all man's strivings are void. It is sufficient that man casts himself at the feet of Christ to save him from his sins. The Orthodox doctrine holds that the whole spiritual life of man is a fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit supports what man should strive. If man does not strive the Apostle will reproach him, saying, You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, Heb. 12. 4. The Holy Bible portrays the spiritual life as a struggle which needs the whole armor of God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, F. 6. 12. This war undoubtedly needs man to struggle and win. This fight is what the Lord Jesus Christ meant in his message to the angels of the seven churches when he said, To him who overcomes I will give, Rev. 2. 17. Grace does not do all the work, otherwise God would not have said, Return to me and I will return to you, Zech. 1. 3. 6. Repentance and Experiences. Our Protestant brethren consider repentance an experience, and encourage repentance to inform people of their experiences. So, you hear from them the expression, I was so and so, and now I have become so and so. The repentant continues to recount his previous sins in front of everybody without shame, covering his sins with the grace he has now attained. If he keeps silent, he will be asked, tell us about your experiences. But orthodoxy forbids these narrations as they mainly involve boasting of the change which the repentant has reached. 7. Repentance, Joy and Contrition Orthodoxy emphasizes the contrition of the soul of the repentant. He should remember before God the sins he committed, drenching his bed with his tears as David the prophet did. Protestantism, however, pushes people towards joy, which involves no contrition. In most cases, the repentant directly becomes a minister, which gives him no chance to grieve in his inner self over his sins. The reason the Protestants give for this attitude is that the repentant should rejoice over his salvation. In replying to this point, we put before them the incident of the people of Israel eating the Passover lamb in the midst of their joy for their salvation from the sword of the angel of death. They had to eat the Passover lamb with bitter herbs. According to the Lord's command, X. 12. 8. The bitter herbs reminded them of their sins because of which they were enslaved to Pharaoh. It is true that eating the Passover lamb reminded them of salvation and its joy but the lamb had to be eaten with bitter herbs. What is the position of bitter herbs in repentance according to the Protestant concept? One of the Protestant books even attacked the phrase Lord have mercy which we say in our prayers. It also attacked all the phrases of contrition, condemning them to be against the joy of salvation. 8. Repentance and newness of life. What we call in orthodoxy repentance is frequently called by our Protestant brethren newness of life, renewal or salvation. Some Protestants ask one another, have you been renewed? Have you been saved? Have you experienced newness of life? And all they mean is the act of repentance, no more, no less. 
In the orthodox concept, all these expressions, renewal, newness of life and salvation are completed in the sacrament of baptism, but repentance is the process of change in man's way of life. 9. Repentance precedes all other sacraments. The sacrament of repentance precedes the sacrament of baptism. As St. Peter the Apostle says, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized, Acts 2, 38. It precedes the sacrament of Eucharist. As our teacher St. Paul the Apostle says, Therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 1 Cor. 11. 27-29. The sacrament of repentance also precedes the sacrament of the holy unction. Our teacher James the Apostle says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Jaws 5 14 15. The same applies to the rest of the sacraments because so long as the sacraments are graces of the Holy Spirit then they should be prepared for by purifying the heart through repentance, but since our brethren the Protestants do not believe in sacraments nor in repentance as a sacrament, these words are outside their concepts. 10. Repentance, Conduct and Deeds Our brethren the Protestants hold that the Christian life is not a life of conduct and deeds but a life of grace and faith. In orthodoxy, faith and grace are important, but nevertheless our church says with the forerunner, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, Matt. 3. 8. Orthodoxy holds that conduct is an important matter necessary for salvation. If our Protestant brethren persist on the importance of blood for man's purification, we put before them the saying of the Apostle John regarding the relation between conduct and the blood of the Lord. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1 7 Here, conduct is put as a condition. There is no cleansing by blood without repentance. Repentance is an essential condition.